hear the wanderer alone and tempest tossed. No storm can hide that peaceful radiance beam me. Since Jesus came to seek and save the lost, give me the Bible, holy message shining. Welcome once again. This is your Bible studies, Words of Wisdom. I'm your host, Pastor Elario Davis. And I'm your co-host, Pastor Denny McCulloch. We are so happy that you are joining us once again. And we want to congratulate you for taking out time to um, study with us. And as we always do, we want to open this program with a word of prayer. And as I ask, Pastor, may you pray for us as yes. we start our study for today? Okay, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for the series, the healthy and happy Bible seminars. Father, we ask once again that the Holy Spirit would be with us and that he would help each and every viewer who is joined with us today, that they may receive your blessing as they learn the truth, that they may apply it in their lives. We pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Yes, my friends, as we welcome you once again to this, our Bible studies today, we are studying the second part of a study we started on our previous study. What we talk about how to defeat the, the giant of high blood pressure or hypertension. And um, we want to let those of you who are joining us, maybe for the first time, may know that we are on a series of studies about healthy and happy Bible seminars. So this is a series we are doing of several studies about health and the Bible. We are so happy that we can share this valuable information with you, and we do hope that you may share it with your friends as well. And there are certain information that you need to know. I would like to ask Pastor to share with us how we can, all our viewers can get these lessons and get connected to even an electronic Bible study. Yes, and like you were saying, you know, we could connect either electronically or in physical. We have the Bible seminars in the printed form. I see you have a copy of your pastor. Okay, correct. Right, so for all of you, as you could get in contact with your local pastor and get the the nine different seminars in this series, mm -hmm. all right, the Healthy and Happy Bible Seminars. And also you could connect electronically through the movie app, all right, in this, the same recording, there is a video that is attached to it. And it has all instruction of how you could go the, um, in your Play Store and download the Bovi app, or you could go online, all right, and um, sign up for these Bible seminars. And you could join us weekly as we are right here, going through the different questions, and you could get more informed, you know, on how you could uh, find the answers to each one of these questions. And if you would just like to find out more uh, information in regards to each topic, you know, we invite you. Um, to be with us weekly right here and you'll be able to bet, get better acquainted with the different health topics as we are discussing them. Very good. So we want to continue with our study for this, uh, our second part of the study that we have begun in our previous uh, study about hypertension. And I like the introduction Pastor did about the giant Goliath. In other words, hypertension is so huge and so dangerous and some doctors call it the silent killer because this could kill you silently without you even knowing that your pressure can be so high that it can just um, take you uh, give you a heart attack or even uh, a blood clot in the in in your in your brain and it could give you a stroke and we could die in in instantaneously so um, it's a giant but we have ways how to defeat the giant. Remember, we share with our viewers in our previous study some, some secrets how to defeat this giant, some stones. Remember those stones past? We, we presented at least five stones how to defeat those giants. We just yes. want to review them quickly as we go in All right, the, today. The first stone was the DASH diet, okay? Okay. All right, and the DASH diet, it has to mm -hmm. do with um, being intentional about your diet, you know, avoiding those things that are bad in your diet. It, the DASH, it's an acronym that stands for Dietary Approach to Stop Hypertension. Mm -hmm. All right, and so we talk about avoiding saturated fats, um, eating fresh and uh, raw foods, uh, vegetables, of course, and fruits, 
and using more whole grains, all right, which are high in fiber and low in fats, and use less uh, fat and non-dairy products and limit the number of the, um, the consumption of salt to one um, flush teaspoon per day. Very All right, good. we know that you can't be exact with that, but you know, try to get close to that figure at okay. least every day. The second stone is to destroy this giant called hypertension is to lessen your stress, avoid stress. Mm -hmm. All right, the third one, third stone, as David had five stones that he picked up on the riverside to defeat Goliath, yeah. <laughs> the third stone to defeat high blood pressure is do aerobic exercise. All right, so you want to do aerobic exercise five days a week for 30 minutes. Okay, and you could do either walking, running, swimming, or any other aerobic exercise. And we were discussing how walking is the least expensive mm. and also is highly effective. The fourth stone is to lower your cholesterol. All right, we know there are the, 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 the bad cholesterol and there is a good cholesterol. And what you want to do is to consume those food that has good cholesterol, and that has to do with uh, more vegetable, vegetable products. Get it. Get your cholesterol from natural source because your body would be uh, better able to uh, um, digest it and, digest digest it and process it. these cholesterol. All right. Avoid the unsaturated uh, fats because these are high in bad cholesterol. All right. And then definitely the fifth stone, and, and it was the last but not least important. It's the spiritual meditation and so we discuss how it is good for us to meditate at least one hour a day but also that we could meditate the day that God had given us during the week for us to meditate and right and we found out in the Bible it goes all the way back to the beginning when God had created the world we see God created a day it was called the Sabbath all right and I found out this word Sabbath it literally means from the Hebrew it means rest, all right? That is what God did. He sabbat on the seventh day. He rested, all right? And um, we see that this is important because on that day, God sanctified the day. He blessed the day and he participated in resting. So it wasn't that God created um, the rest uh, for man and he never had any affiliation with it. Mm. You know, whatever God did, he also participated in it. And so it's, it's quite a blessing for us to have this, this great offer that God gives to us. And, and we could, you know, in this sense, be able to meditate, but also uh, as a way that we could avoid hypertension. Okay, like it's, a, it's a, both a physical health as well as a, as a mental, a emotional, a spiritual rest, you know, as we see the, 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 the rest of the weekly and the hour meditation. Now, this takes us to a very important aspect though. If we are talking about a weekly rest and we notice that God rests on a particular day and I ask myself, so why God didn't choose any other day? And um, why he didn't, as some people say, why he didn't bless all the days? Why it have to be one day? Is that day so important? Well, God, I think God see it so important for us to rest that he even mandate work and he mandate rest. Yes. Because I think that God can, as the creator, know how well our body can work with this rest, both physical and spiritual. But today, Sabbath worship, just like the body, the boy David seems small and Sunday worship like the giant Goliath looms tall. How did this happen? Why today, you know, from growing up, from a boy growing up, I know that everybody rests on Sunday, but we don't know anything about resting on Saturday. Saturday is a regular work day. But the Bible talks about the seventh day, six days shall no labor, and seventh day you shall rest and 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 um, no labor on that day. And God, because God created this world in seventh day, why? Where did that God? Why today everybody just shift from Saturday to Sunday? You know, I heard somebody say once, Pastor. Well, 
um, because the Sabbath was for the Jews, and um, and and Sunday is for the Christians. Does that make a difference? Does, does God accept, accept that? Yes, and uh, it's like what we have here on the slide. You know, some people say, well, it's because it's the crucifixion, it's the resurrection. All right. It's the day of resurrection. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, everything in the, the past was nailed to the cross, but you know what was nailed to the cross? And so we have it, the um, it, verse in Colossians chapter 2. Exactly. It, so it seems to us what was nailed to the cross. So something went wrong, and I think there was a misunderstanding, and, and you, you, you start what, where I was going. There, there is a misunderstanding, and a majority of Christians that I have spoken with today, they believe sincerely that God do away with the Sabbath, Pastor. God, God changed it, and, and, and yes, it was for the Jews. So now, God, Colossians 2.14 says that, um, that um, yes, the Sabbath was nailed to the cross. But the Bible was talking about, in the, in the word Sabbath, as you mentioned, it means um, like a holiday in the, in the Christian, in the Bible terms. But it doesn't mean that, um, that all the, 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 the ceremonial Sabbaths are seventh day of the week. So there was a ceremonial Sabbath that went that that was not is not applicable to us once again. But the weekly Sabbath was not changed. The Sabbath of creation is still the Sabbath that was changed was the Sabbath that were connected with sacrifices yes. and specific days uh, to do those sacrifices. And those days were called Sabbath because they became like holy like holidays, like a day of rest. That those days were to respect it, those dates were to be respected, but they are different from the seventh day Sabbath, the weekly Sabbath yes. of creation. And right? um, the, we see here that these Sabbaths, as you mentioned, the ceremonial Sabbaths, mm -hmm. which were considered rest days, just like the weekly Sabbath, but uh, it wasn't as important as the weekly Sabbath. You know, these the weekly Sabbath had been in existence from creation because yes. you see, God was the one who created the ceremonial Sabbath. They came into existence with Moses, you know, and the whole um, uh, the new ceremonies that they would practice in commemoration of what Colossians chapter two, verse fourteen to seventeen is talking about. Is they were a shadow of the things to come. You know, all of these ceremonial Sabbaths and the ceremonies that were involved. Everything pointed to Jesus. Jesus. They had a, you know, when Jesus would come mm -hmm. and the, the great sacrifice that he would give and every other thing that is attached to his uh, crucifixion. But they were a shadow. The real thing was Jesus. Okay, so when Jesus came, mm -hmm. you know, he put and uh, he was the fulfillment of all of that. And so there was no need for those ceremonial uh, summits and the ceremonies to continue after his crucifixion. But this does not refer to the seven day Sabbath. The seven day Sabbath was different, and that is what we will study in the next. Exactly. The next and that's session. where I, you know, for our viewers, that's where the confusion comes. So please pay attention as we go and we explain uh, with the Bible about how these ceremonial Sabbaths, what they were intended for. And how they are different from the weekly Sabbath. Yes. Right? So the, the um, these Sabbaths, the ceremonial Sabbaths, they foreshadowed Christ. That is what is there in the um, in, in the seminar that you have here on the Bovi app or the physical the physical seminar, right? So you could just pull it in around. Correctly. So foreshadowed Christ. And I like this 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 what that it foreshadows Christ. You know, before Calvary, for example, um, uh, before Calvary. Christ's shadow was the system of animal sacrifices. You know, the Bible mentioned about a lamb and the lamb that um, that would uh, every sinner would would that would sin. They need to take an animal to the um, to the sanctuary and they would confess their sin over that animal. The priest would give them a knife and they would kill that animal and that animal or the sheep or goat or different animal. It would be a uh, um, also a bullock and so forth, you know, like a, a young young bull and so forth. Those animals have a shadow and a meaning. And what do they mean? Let's talk about the lamb, for instance. You know, the lamb was a representation, a, a, a perfect representation that every morning in the sanctuary, a lamb would, would be sacrificed. And that lamb have a meaning. 
when when um, when Jesus appeared, John refers to Jesus as the Lamb of God. In John 1 29, Jesus John say, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So we see that the ceremonial laws were a symbol or a shadow of Christ. So that system, they had holidays and um, those holidays were like, for example, the Passover, the Day of Atonement and so forth. So we, yes. we must not um, mix them with yeah. the seventh day Sabbath. And, and these ceremonial Sabbaths, you know, I, I believe you mentioned it, these ceremonial Sabbaths could have fallen on any day oh, of the week. Sure. They could have fallen on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, just like we have holidays now. And, and these these um, these days were kept, I would say, holy in a sense, because the people were involved in the in the ceremony, no? And and even if they were not directly involved, you know, in, in the whole nation, the their minds were to be uh, turned towards meditating upon what each uh, ceremony was was pointing towards, and and so you know, they were these were days that the people would rest from labor, you know, they wouldn't continue the normal routine of working as they would work every other day, but they would rest and, and they would participate in, a, in the spiritual activity as well. And so in that sense, it was considered uh, a Sabbath, but it was not the weekly uh -huh. uh, Sabbath, and it was different, all right? And so we have Leviticus um, chapter 23, verse 32, it says that the Sabbath is a, to be a complete rest to you, and you shall humble your souls on the ninth of the month at evening, from evening until uh, from evening until evening, you shall keep your Sabbath. All right. So we you know that that to be the the outline of the day. You know, the day begins from evening to evening, and also the Sabbath begins from evening to evening. And this this is very important because uh, some people they don't understand why as Seventh Day Adventists we uh, begin our Sabbath day on Friday evening, as we tend to consider it. Mm. But back then, for the for the Jewish people, and even in creation, we find the the days really began with the evening first, mm. and then the 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 daylight part. You know, the evening and the morning was the first day. That is what Genesis chapter one says. And just the same way, you know, in Leviticus, it repeats the same idea, and that is how we keep the Sabbath. Mm. You know, from Sorry. evening to evening, from sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday, as we know it. Today, and um, yes, yeah, so these were celebra celebrated just like we have Christmas mm -hmm. and Easter. We have Labor Day, and the others in, in our country and across the world. You know, these were what the regular ceremonial Sabbaths they represented, and um, they they were they were celebrated once a year. All right, as opposed to the weekly Sabbath. This weekly Sabbath was. Um, celebrated every seventh day, every seven. fifty-two times for the year. Those Sabbaths used to fall, and those week, those those um, ceremonial Sabbath used to fall on a particular date. Yes, yeah, they have different date. There were seven ceremonial Sabbaths specifically among the Israelites, and those ceremonial Sabbaths represented uh, and point to Jesus, right? Yes. The, the three famous ones that well known was the the, the Passover and the, uh, the Day of Atonement. Day of Atonement. And also, um, you know, they have some, some, they, some other, others, well, as a one that they had to go to Jerusalem and, and celebrate as well. So we see then that these dates used to, these Sabbaths used to fall on a particular date, but the weekly Sabbath is totally different. So that's what we are trying to make the difference now. So when Jesus died, what happened, Pastor? When Jesus died, that, that system came to what? To an end and was nailed to the cross. But as I reiterate, is not the seventh day Sabbath that was nailed to the cross, is the ceremonial laws that were nailed to the cross. Yes. So different. It was a system you know? that God had revealed to Moses that Moses put into the writing, you know, is attached to the, the Ten Commandments. Exactly. All the other laws attached and the ceremonies. Um, you know, that those ceremonial uh, Sabbaths and the ceremonial laws were nailed to the cross. And so in John chapter 19, verse mm -hmm. 13, Jesus said while he was on the cross, it says as uh, they put the vinegar on his mouth, you know, uh, and, and Jesus said, it is finished. It and with that, he bowed, up, he bowed his head and gave up the spirit. All right, and that is when Jesus died. 
All right, so when he said it is finished, it means no more candlesticks mm -hmm. pointing to the sanctuary service, for Christ is the light of the world. And what else is he saying? No, no more, more earthly priests. The priests or okay? Jesus. So the is. whole system of priests was done mm -hmm. away with. All right, no more high priests in that sense. Mm -hmm. All right, for Jesus is our high priest in heaven. That is what Hebrews it tells us. And no more lamb for sacrifice. And that is why today, the Christian, the Christian uh, world, we don't continue don't sacrificing lamb because, lamb. as John said, as he saw Jesus coming, behold, the Lamb, lamb of God, God that take it away the, the sin sins. of the world. So Christ is the Lamb of God, and and also so at Christ's crucifixion, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Goliath did not conquer David. All right, Goliath did not conquer David. Hey. Exactly. So when, when Christ was crucified, we understand then that it seems that Satan had, had defeated Jesus. But Jesus, remember Jesus said, I lay down my life and I take up my life. All right. So well, let us see then others, what others believe about the change from Sabbath to Sunday, how it occurred at Christ's resurrection. And over and over, I would hear a saying, even from ministers from the pulpit, that says that now um, the resurrection, Jesus was resurrected on the first day of the week or on, on Sunday. So that's why we keep Sunday as, as a holiday or as the day of rest or as this, the new Sabbath. But John 20, 19 says, why had the disciples assembled on that day? Because some people use this verse. Yes. So they say, you see the disciples, they were gathering at the first day of the week. Yes, but they did not gather in for worship. All right, this, was, this was when, after Jesus' crucifixion, yeah, exactly. and Mary came and he knocked on the door. The disciples were gathered there. So mm -hmm. on the first week, on the first day of the week, when the disciples were gathered, he says, with, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, fear of the Jews. says Jesus I came and stood among them and mm -hmm. said, Peace and be with you. So you see, they were gathered the first day of the week, but why were they gathered? Because they were fearful of the Jewish leaders. Yes, they just killed Jesus. So they said, well, they, they will be after us. So let us hide and, and you know, go to a secluded place where, where they, their life would be at least protected. All right, there's another example in, in 1 Corinthians 16, mm -hmm. 1 and 2. It says, now concerning the collection for the saints, as I directed the churches of Galatia, so do you also on the first day of the week, each one of you is to put aside and save as he may prosper so that no collection be made when I come. And so, mm -hmm. you know, people that say the, the, the Sabbath was now transferred to Sunday say, well, see the first day on the first day of the week, mm -hmm. they were to lay aside the offering. In other sense, something with church service must be involved there. But, mm -hmm. you know, it was Paul um, recommending to the, the Corinthians that they put aside something for the promotion of the gospel. It was not necessarily that he was instituting um, worship on Sunday. And you see, my friends, at least they are eight verses or nine, if we could call an uh, extra one, that mention about the first day of the week that we know as Sunday. And these days, these eight verses, these are the ones that we are going over yes. that could create some confusion by some of us might be thinking, you see, the, 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 for example, the last one that we have on this yes, in here, Acts chapter 20, 20 verse 7, 7. All right, it says Say, on the first day of the this, week, this we was, came to be, together and break bread. Mm -hmm. And Paul spoke to the people and said, because he did to leave the next day, kept on talking until midnight. And we have the famous story. Yeah. The young boy was, was, uh, sleeping at the was window. there at the window and he fell asleep. He fell, uh -huh. you know, and he died. Uh -huh. And then Paul went to pray and the young boy, he came back to life. So, All right, but. Um, the, the technical thing of that was, mm -hmm. you know, knowing that the day begins in the evening and exactly. ends at daylight. The first day of the week was actually what we consider today as Saturday, Saturday night. Saturday night. That was no um, Sunday service that was happening. So, so you see these verses are telling us then that is God, they, we can't use these verses to say that God changed the Sabbath to Sunday. Because the Sunday doesn't reflect, those verses don't reflect that it's a day of worship and there is no command to do so. All right, so um, there are in, in our lesson, if whenever you get a lesson like this, there will be activities in a lesson, right? And there is an activity that we could do 
you know. So while the New Testament records only one first day meeting, it records dozens of Sabbath services. And we yes. have a whole a lot of verses here that present how the disciples usually meet on Sabbath but more than Sunday. In total, in the verses, Pastor, we calculate approximately in these three passages, 83 Sabbath services. It's amazing. And like only what, one mention of Sunday service. That was the regular day of worship. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we see that at Christ's resurrection, once again, that Goliath did not defeat David. Yeah, All right, yeah. so the sanctity of, of Sunday is not found in the scripture. So where is its origin? Now we know the origin to be with. He made the, the definite the definite mark in making it official was well, Emperor Constantine of Rome, who issued the first on the law. All right. right? And the date is March 7, uh, 321 AD. Very good. So my friend, we get now the clear understanding that God's Sabbath is still, is still a um, for us to be kept. So later on, we see the Church of Rome, and so they instituted um, a day of, of the Sunday, they institutionalized the Sunday, and even in the Catechism, in a doctrine of the Catechism, it's found in, in page 50, whole, they explain that the true day of worship is Sabbath, but that the Church recognized that they changed the Sabbath. So if we are keeping Sunday instead of Sabbath, we're not keeping the right day. So therefore, we need to um, follow what the Bible say. And once you follow what the Bible say, you will be on the right track. Yes. I like how the Catechism may put it, you know, it makes no question. It says that Saturday is the Sabbath. Because some people say, oh, the Sabbath could be Sunday, you know, they play mm -hmm. with the words. But the, the, the Sabbath really, as the Bible put it, the seventh day, you know, the seventh day starts from the first day, mm -hmm. the first day is Sunday, and it ends up at Saturday. And it was a what it was a Catholic priest, Pastor, yes. the one who offered an any evangelical if they could find a verse in the Bible that 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 says that Sunday is a day to be worshipped. And he offered a thousand dollars. That was yeah. many years ago. Because it has the catechism say rightly, rightly said the Sabbath yes. was changed by then, they, they, by, by man, it was not changed by God. So it was not changed by man, and we see that even in heaven, the Sabbath will continue to be on. It was not changed day. by God, it was changed it was, by man. It yes. was not changed by God, yes. <laughs> yes sir. And even in heaven, you know, we continue to celebrate the seventh day yes. Sabbath. All right, so soon Jesus is coming again, and the Sabbath worship will last forever, as Isaiah 66, 23 says. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass from one new moon to another meeting every month, and from one Sabbath to another meeting every week, every seventh day, shall all flesh come to worship before me, said the Lord. The Lord. And so we will worship no other than uh, Jesus, the son of right. David. Right. All right, we know David uh, defeated Goliath, and Jesus also being uh, David's descendant, he defeated the spiritual well, like, well, as as we can have the victory well. as well. So we have our right. decision today. So I pray that you could use the five stones to defeat the David. Goliath of hypertension as well. And that you could see it, that Sunday worship came not from the Bible but from Rome. Yes. And Sabbath worship came from Jesus, all right? This the seven day Sabbath. So we have that also that you could choose the son on the side of Jesus, who is the son of David. So you and I have a choice to make. So I choose to keep God's seventh day. I choose to rest on that day that God rested and blessed and sanctified. And that Jesus says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And also he says, think not that I came to change the law or the prophet. I came not to change but to fulfill. Yeah. And if you love me, keep my commandment. May God bless you as we here choose to keep the Sabbath day because that's the day God blessed and he did not change it. So we come to the end of the study for today. We went over a little more of our time, but we thank you for joining us. Remember to share the link with others and we will pray as we conclude our study for today. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for Jesus, our Savior, for the Lamb of God that took away our sins. And we thank you, Lord, because we can find rest and we can be delivered and be restored in our health when we follow these five stones that we have shared with our friends. We pray, O oh God, that we can beat 
the, and destroy the giant of um, hypertension. And as we rest in Jesus, we can defeat Satan as well. Bless our viewers and continue to bless this program. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. We hope to have you on our next program. God bless and see you then. Thank you.